Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing some of the postgraduate options if you are a graduate from like one of the IMS courses in Italy. Now, this is a really complicated process and it's not really something that you have to worry about uh, until after you get in. But nonetheless, today I'm going to talk about some of the most popular options, like just briefly describe them, maybe like the pros and cons and let you know that we are going to be focusing on this like a lot more detailed in the future. So this video is going to cover like maybe like a brief outline and some of the advantages and disadvantages. Now keep in mind, I did like very superficial research for this. So it's not like an exact guide. Things might also change in the next few years. Um, I would recommend that you guys check out like uh, the subreddit that I'm going to put up the link here uh, if you want like more up-to-date information. But today I'm going to go over some of the most popular options. And please do know that like we are going to have a lot more detailed and focused articles coming out. Also, I will be interviewing a graduate from each of these countries over the next few weeks. I already have Italy and the UK done. So, you know, it's just it's just going to take a little bit of time until we find graduates from IMS courses in these other countries. But all of this information is coming. Once you graduate from medical school in Italy, for most places, your degree is counted as a European degree. So you will go through like the EU application process. There are some countries, though, even though your uh, diploma is an EU diploma, they do actually care if you're non-EU or EU. Now, thankfully, this is in a minimal number of places, but uh, this is just something to consider. In general, though, I would say that the most popular options for IMS students are going to the UK, going to Germany, staying in Italy, and then like a few odd places like the US, Norway, uh, Switzerland, which I'm just going to very, very briefly touch on. So starting with the UK, I just want to remind you that this process is actually changing because again, Brexit happened recently. And so they're thinking about changing how you're going to do it. So at the moment, there are actually three different ways where you can apply for the UK foundation program, but I'm just going to mention the most common one for IMS students. And this is where you apply directly for the foundation program, which is two years through a portal called Arial, where you need to complete the IELTS like language exam, which is really funny to me because even if you are a UK citizen who came to Italy to do your degree and you're just going back, you still need to do this English proficiency test. There's also a few other key skills that uh, you need to know, which is vena puncture, artery puncture, cannulation, male catheterization. But worst comes to worst, uh, the hospitals will actually train you in this. So there's like a few things that they might require. The other thing I'm seeing in my notes is that many EU graduates are both qualified and registered and able to tech FY2 position, so foundation year two. So the difference is that in year one, you're basically like trying out all of the different departments and in year two, you have a lot more responsibility. So if you're graduating from uh, Italy, you are actually able to go straight into year two. But a lot of people actually prefer to do year one from the beginning. Just so, you know, if you have like a lack of practical experience or you didn't have as much exposure, you also get to learn the system more. So that is another thing that you can do. But basically the foundation year program is you graduate, you go there for two years, you're still considered kind of of like an intern you're not really technically a resident technically so you go to like different uh specialties and you start narrowing in on the one that you want to do now there are also other things like you need to do something called a situational judgment test the sjt which asks you all about like ethical situations and you know tests your morality they also uh want to know if you've done like previous degrees or if you have previously uh published works and what actually matters is your decile ranking in your class so like where you rank compared to the rest of your classmates and between all of these you are given points and then based on that you might be assigned uh to like say like you want a really competitive place in london in a very very busy like teaching hospital then you know they're going to take all of these other things into consideration generally though this is the most popular option for people because one uh you're like as long as you don't you're not dead set on the most competitive spot you are pretty much guaranteed a place in somewhere like if you apply to the uk you are basically guaranteed uh, somewhere to go to and it's english speaking so i think this is why a lot of lot of people like to go to the uk the pay is also pretty decent but in general uh some of the negatives i've heard about it is basically like 
two years is a waste of time, especially if you know the specialty you want to go into. Uh, because in the UK, they focus on publishing papers while they're in medical school, you might have lesser of a chance to get into a specialty that you really want, especially a competitive one, because you're going to have like less time exposed to there. Um, another thing I've also seen is that apparently I don't know if this is exactly true, but you know, we are interviewing students to find out more. But again, like going into competitive specialties is apparently quite hard if you're an IMG. Now, I don't know how much of this is true, but yeah, the negatives are that you might have to wait a very, very long time to then find out that you can't even go into the specialty that you want to go into. Another thing to quickly mention is that I couldn't find a solid resource on this because some said you did and some said you didn't. It said that like some previous experience in the NHS might be very beneficial because you need to sit interviews as well. But there is the Oxford Handbook Foundation program, which is a PDF from what I understand. So I will also put this in the description and in the comments just in case. So next is studying in Italy, staying in Italy. I know it's really hard to imagine that after six years of living here, uh, you might want to even stay here even longer, but it's actually a surprisingly popular option, especially if you have developed your Italian to a certain degree. Now, the way it works here is that once you graduate and you get your license uh, from doing, you know, your required clinical hours, you sit a standardized exam at the same time and at, not at the same place, but at the same time as the entire country who's applying for residency spots. And uh, it works basically in the same way as the IMAT. So before the exam, you kind of rank your specialties and the hospitals as choices. You know, like the way we would put like Sapienza is my first choice. And then like, I don't know, Bologna is my first choice. And then like uh, Bergamo is my next one. So you do the exact same thing, but you do it for specialty and for hospital. So you create your ranking list, you sit the exam, and then based on your result, you're put into like a list of where you might have gotten. So a lot of people really like this option because one, uh, the, the playing field is completely, completely standardized. There is no like, if you have published papers, you might be preferred or things like that. And the nicest thing is they do not discriminate at all if you're non-EU or you're EU. So you're treated basically the exact same. The nice thing is, even if you graduated from the English course, you're actually considered as if you graduated from the Italian course. So you don't have to provide an Italian certificate. But since the exam is in Italian and you're going to be interacting with patients in Italian, uh, you really should be fluent in Italian, like I can't emphasize this enough. But basically, you don't need to provide a language certificate and they don't care if you're EU or non-EU. You just do this exam, you get into a place and you just start. And a lot of people like this also because you go into the specialty you wanted from the get-go. So like if you really want um, like dermatology, which is very, 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 very competitive, you know basically when the results came come out if you're going to get into dermatology or not, compared to, you know, doing two foundation years and then doing three uh, core training years and then doing extra years on top of that and then not even getting into the specialty you want. The nice thing is like you're, you go straight into the specialty you want. Now, the hard thing is though, the exam is incredible incredibly competitive. Like the standardized exam, uh, from what I've heard, again, I don't know, I, ha I haven't done it myself, but I have heard that it is very, very highly, highly competitive, mainly because uh, the spots, especially the spots in popular specialties is quite limited. Now, I have actually interviewed a current guy who is in the orthopedics hospital in Florence, which is the, one of the best in Italy. And he was a non-EU graduate from Sapienza's IMS course. And so that is coming soon. I just want to make a quick mention that apparently Spain works the exact same way. I didn't look too much into it, but from what I have heard from friends who are planning to go to Spain, it works in the exact same way as Italian, except everything is in Spanish. So you do the standardized test, you put a ranking, you go in, blah, blah, blah. So it's the exact same way Italy works. It's just all in Spanish. Next is Germany. And in Germany, you are considered like applying as an EU person if your degree is EU, because the way you apply is different compared to if you are EU or non-EU. But if your degree is EU, then you get to apply with that process. Now, Germany is an incredibly popular option because you can go into any specialty you want and you apply to it as if it's a job, right? I know that's really interesting. Like there's no standardized test. They don't really look at like individual scores from your exams, but what they do is you go in with a CV uh, basically. Well, you go in, but you understand that I'm talking in analogy, but you go in with a CV and they look at, you know, um, where have you done internships? Like, have you done any research papers? Have you gone to congresses? Uh, have you done like, what are like rotations there in that department or elsewhere? and you basically apply to it as if you're applying to a job and you go straight into the specialty you want. Like there's no standardized exam. The competition is a lot, lot lower, but you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to speak 
of very, very, very fluent German. So I'm gonna read off my phone because again, the processes are always complicated. But so what you need to do is you file for a medical license called an approbation. And so you need your medical diploma, a B2 certificate that you've passed the FSP, which in hindsight, I really should have wrote what that was and not put it as an acronym. And you need to put like your criminal records and a health certificate, a CV, a birth certificate. And this gets officially authenticated. Okay, and you might need to spend some time in a German hospital, which kind of waits, wh sorry, which kind of really helps with the thing. And you just go in and it's as if you apply for a job. And this is really nice because if you want a really, really competitive specialty like plastic surgery, you can just go into it as long as you know you have a good CV that shows, like demonstrates your interest and passion for it, and you speak a very fluent level of German. So uh, that's why Germany is one of the most popular options for like most EU graduates. So since it's asked all the time, I'm also going to briefly talk about the US. Um, the US is extremely expensive to apply to. Like on average, not even counting any of the preparation materials or question banks or books or anything, the process on average is about $10,000. Because like you have to complete rotations there, you have to fly out there for interviews, you have to do exams, like the step one alone is $1,000. And so it works out to be very, very expensive. You are severely discriminated against if you're an IMG, which is an international medical graduate. So if you haven't graduated in the States, you're instantly put at a disadvantage. And this is now even more so now that step one has become pass fail. So in the past, step one was actually giving you a score. And if your step one score was incredibly high, you had a very, very good fighting chance for competitive specialties. But now that step one is pass fail, uh, this is really problematic because they're going to basically be looking at, uh, you know, if you were in the US, how many research papers do you have, you know, things like that. So it's made it very, very hard for IMGs. Um, so you do the step one, which is pass fail. Then you do the step two, which is clinical based. And so step two CK, you need to have published papers, you need to have completed clerkships in hospitals in the US, and you need letters of recommendation. So the nice thing is, I know someone who scored an insanely high step one score. I know it's pass fail now, but he knows the process inside out. So he's been writing uh, a guide, and I'm also gonna hopefully have him on the podcast to ask him more about it because I have no interest in going to the US. And since he is actually going there, uh, he can give like a lot more detailed information. So that will definitely be coming soon. Um, if you are interested in that. You can 100% go to the US if you graduated from Italy. It's just, is the process worth it? Because it is so expensive. You are like not going to be in a very favorable position for a competitive specialty. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that like, you have to just look at uh, the facts. Um, some other things, I also get asked about Canada. From when I did personal research about it a few years ago, it said that it's impossible. But from talking to a Canadian student, uh, he said that it is possible, even if you're not a Canadian citizen. So that's a little bit up in the air. Hopefully I'll have a little bit more information about it. But from when I did my personal research, uh, if you graduated abroad as a Canadian citizen or someone who has citizenship or like a permanent residency or whatever, you can go back to Canada. This is very, very possible. But from what I understood, if you have no connection to Canada, you can't really apply as a foreign applicant and a Canadian student has told me that actually you can so I will be researching this a little bit more and hopefully coming to you with a bit better information but I did quickly want to mention Canada as well because it's very very commonly asked along with the US and now I'm just going to do like very rapid fire on three other countries which is Ireland Ireland does discriminate if you're EU or non-EU regardless of the fact if your degree is EU or non-EU and basically if you're non-EU graduating in an EU country uh Apparently it's like very, very, very low chances, um, unfortunately. The other one is Switzerland, which also differentiates whether you're EU or non-EU, regardless of uh, your diploma. But apparently it is very, very, very high pay and might be a nicer option than Germany. That's something that you need to research yourself, but you also need to speak fluent German for it. And the final one is Norway, because it's a very popular option, especially for people who want to go to uh, the Nordics, where you need to know the language, but apparently it's very easy if you're an English speaker and you need to start the process uh, towards sixth year. There's like no standardized exam. It kind of works in a similar way where um, you like apply for jobs. My friend told me that in Denmark, they'll actually pay for language courses because they have a lack of doctors. They're trying to bring foreign doctors in. So again, I know like this doesn't really give you any information, but I'm just trying to throw as much like 
stuff at you superficially so that you can have a vague idea of where you can consider. This isn't meant to be like a very detailed guide. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of brief information. But like I said, we're going to be going into these a lot more detailed into each of them. And so uh, if you don't want to miss that, subscribe or don't, I guess I, I don't know, like at this stage, if you're still not subscribed and you're getting this much value from these videos, I don't know what to tell you.